Welcome to or welcome back to Wrong Sports as I continue my series to kick off the college football season. My first video was all about the most important ties and then I went into my upset lists. I did the best upsets pre-1945, then I had upsets that nobody talks about. Now I'm doing upsets that are strange and the reason why they're strange is, well, you'll find out as I go through the list. This will be a ranked list and it will be from games between 1945 and the year 2000 because this is a classic college football channel in case you haven't noticed. Most of my videos are about college football before the year 2000. By the way, you can check out a whole bunch of playlists to the side. But before I get to the list, make sure you subscribe to the channel, please. Also ring the bell so you can get updates on brand new videos. And if you like this video, please give it a like. Also share it with another college football fan so we can get this channel with more subscribers before the the end of the season. Plus, you can check out my social media. You can also help out the channel on my Patreon, or you can check out my podcast in the description below. As we kick off the list right now with number 10 on the upsets that are strange, 1999 Louisiana Tech beats Alabama. And anytime Alabama is beat by someone that isn't a top-notch program or an SEC team, it is a pretty big deal. Well, actually, anytime Alabama is beaten is pretty much a big deal right now. But this one is pretty strange, too. Alabama was coming into this game with one of their best teams in a few years. They were already 2-0 behind their great running back, Sean Alexander. Meanwhile, their opponent was the tough and scrappy Louisiana Tech, who often played top teams in their out-of-conference games. Like in this year, they played number one Florida State and number six Texas before they played Alabama. They didn't come close to winning. And by the way, Louisiana Tech and Alabama did play each other in 1997, with Louisiana Tech coming out a winner. But in 1999, Louisiana Tech was given no chance due to losing twice already to top teams in the nation. Plus, due to Alabama's offense being more high-powered than ever before, before, as they had over 500 yards in their previous game, and Sean Alexander was averaging 150 yards per game. But in the game, Louisiana Tech's defense took it to Alabama and held a 12-3 lead at half. After half, the game would break open with a 15-point third quarter by Alabama, and they had a 28-22 lead leading into the fourth quarter. On the final drive, Louisiana Tech, now with a backup quarterback, kept throwing the ball for over 400 yards total in the game to lead to a Louisiana Tech final second touchdown to win 29-28. The upset was strange because Alabama would win their next three games over ranked opponents, and Alabama would win the SEC title and go to the Orange Bowl to end their season 10-3. It is number 10 also because this 1999 Alabama team wasn't yet the world beaters they would become under Saban less than a decade later, but they were still a really good team, and they were a top 25 team going into this game. Number 9 is from 1984, Syracuse beating number 1 Nebraska. This might not seem like it is the biggest upset in the world, but it's one of the weirdest upsets. That's why it's on this list. But it also caused some chaos in the 1984 season as well. Syracuse was coming into the 1984 season off of a decade of being mediocre, as their best record was 7-5 and five during that time. But in their fourth season under Dick McPherson, he was building Syracuse up with a 6-5 record in 1983, and they were 2-1 coming into the 1984 matchup versus Nebraska. But I should also mention that the Syracuse one loss that they had was pretty bad, as they were shut out the previous week to Rutgers, so they actually hadn't scored in two weeks. Nebraska, meanwhile, were coming off of insane offensive years in 1982 and 1983, but both years ended with crushing defeats and them missing out on a national title. To start in 1984, Nebraska were 3-0, and they were coming off of a 42-3 thrashing over number 8 UCLA. And Nebraska and Syracuse weren't strangers to each other, as Nebraska beat Syracuse the previous year by 50 plus points. So many thought after Nebraska scored 40 on a top 10 team the previous week, that this game was going to go exactly the same way. But instead, Syracuse pushed around the Nebraska team to keep the score low. Then after a 14-2 second half by Syracuse, they pulled out the 17-9 win. You can say that this Nebraska loss was not that big of an upset, as losing to Miami the previous year was bigger. And I would also agree with that, but this is stranger because Syracuse was not that good. And they showed it by losing their next three games. 
First, they lost to Florida by a shutout. Then West Virginia beat them by 10. And finally, Penn State beat them by 17. So it's not like this big win did anything for their season. Meanwhile, Nebraska went on a six-game winning streak after this loss, and they were ranked number one yet again, but lost their finale to Oklahoma to be 9-2. And I started it out by saying that this loss caused some chaos because the loss to Syracuse only furthered the case for BYU jumping Nebraska after that Oklahoma loss late in the season. We are in the 1990 season, one of my favorite seasons in college football for my number eight upset. That is Stanford beating Notre Dame. This upset was very strange and still is because of the difference in talent between both teams and the fact that it took one player on Stanford to make all the difference in the game. And coming into this game, Notre Dame was coming off of a 12-win season and they were 3-0 on this season. They were led by Lou Holtz at coach and Rick Meyer at QB. Stanford, meanwhile, were led by second year head coach Denny Green, who won three games in his first year and was on his way to another three-win season in 1990, as Stanford was coming into the Notre Dame game one and three. By the way, on the Stanford team, they had future NFL Hall of Famer John Lynch playing backup QB and also some defense. And they also had Ed McCaffrey at wide receiver. But even though I mentioned those two guys, they weren't the star in this game. No, the star was Stanford's fullback Tommy Vardell. Vardell was known as a big fullback that never fumbled, and Stanford would need him and often use him in goal line situations. And they would use him a lot in the second half of this game, as they were down 24 to 15 at half. After half, the Stanford defense stopped Notre Dame most of the way and allowed Vardell to take over, scoring three times in the second half, all from the one yard line, to give Stanford the 36 to 31 win. The upset led to a three-game losing streak for Stanford, so this upset looks even stranger when the season ended. Plus, Notre Dame would be a top-ranked team at the end of the season, so just a very weird upset, and the fact that one guy scored three times from the one-yard line in the second half is even weirder. But speaking of weird, the upsets get even weirder with number seven. 1981, Georgia Tech beats Alabama. This upset is very weird because it's a really bad team beating a really good team. In 1980, Alabama was 10 and two and they won the Cotton Bowl. They were coached by the legend Bear Bryan and many thought they were ready for a national title in 1981 as they were ranked number two to start the season. Meanwhile, Georgia Tech was the polar opposite. They were coached by a new coach in Bill Curry who came back to his alma mater the year before. He led them to a one nine and one record in 1980, pulling off an upset but an upset tie as they tied number one Notre Dame. But other than that, it was a horrible season for them. They were coming into 1981 with low expectations, but surprised everyone quickly as this game was kicking off their season. And the game was a back and forth affair until late when Georgia Tech went on an 80 yard drive to score a touchdown with less than five minutes left on the clock. And they would hold on to win 24 to 21. The upset was obviously shocking, but it was strange in a few ways. First off, it would have given Bear Bryant his 308th win, which would have given him the record, and instead it was a huge embarrassment, which only looked worse because strangely enough, Georgia Tech didn't win again the rest of the season. This game made the list because this upset led to no winning streak or good season for Georgia Tech, and instead it was like a comet. Once in a while, a terrible team can pull off a huge upset. And to cap off this strange upset, Alabama would go on a tear the rest of the season, winning the SEC, being number three at the end of the season and go to the Cotton Bowl. So yeah, weird. And to round out the first half of this list at number six, it's from 1985. It's one of the biggest gambling upsets ever and just one of the strangest games ever. It's Oregon State beating Washington. Washington was coming into this game a 38 point favorite. And even though they lost their first two games, they would win their next four, including three over Pac-10 teams. So they were looking to win the Pac-10 title again. Oregon State, meanwhile, won their first two games, but then lost their next four, including losing to Grambling State, and then they got shut out two more times. Oregon State had not scored a touchdown in their last three games either, so the 38 points was pretty generous, and not many in the media were thinking that this game was going to be anything, as many were wondering if Washington head coach Don James would play a lot of backups in this game. This game would obviously be strange since it's on the list, as Washington would score first, but then Oregon State were hanging around and even though they had a backup at QB2 they would have a 14 to 10 lead at the half 
At halftime, many still thought it was just a matter of time before Washington would take over and end the game. And they would actually score twice in the second half too to make that look like it was going to happen, as they were up 20-14. to 14. But with two minutes left, Washington was backed up near their end zone and were punting and looking to punt the ball far enough so that Oregon State couldn't score to end the game. Instead, Oregon State would take this chance and block the punt and return it for a touchdown. They would make the extra point to be up 21 to 20. Washington would not be able to score again and the upset would happen, resulting in what was at that point the largest point spread ever to lose as Washington again was a 38 point favorite and they didn't even get 38 points in the game. And the weirdness would continue because Oregon State wouldn't win another game for the rest of the season and would not win another Pac-10 game for another year. Kicking off the top five is from 1984. It's one of my favorite strange upsets. It's Navy beating South Carolina. This upset is strange for a few reasons. First off, when this game kicked off, South Carolina were ranked number two and two wins away from a perfect season and a chance at a national title. That is a rarity. Meanwhile, they were playing Navy, who had only three wins on the year, two of those wins versus one AA opponents, and another win over a 500 UNC team. But on this day in Maryland, Navy had South Carolina's number all game. The game was broadcast nationwide, and many thought it was going to be an easy win for South Carolina as they were getting ready for one of their toughest challenges next week as they would play Clemson. And South Carolina had already beaten top teams like Florida State and Georgia already, so looking forward to Clemson and potentially beating them for the national title was fair. Instead though, like I said, the game was total domination by Navy, who led only 14-7 at half, but then they went on a tear in the second half as they scored 17 unanswered in the third quarter to be up 31 to seven. The game was all out of reach and so was their perfect season for South Carolina who lost 38 to 21. South Carolina would win their final regular season game to be 10 and one, while Navy would lose to Army to be four, six and one, making this a big reason why this upset is on the list. And also it ruined one of South Carolina's best chances for a national title. And we're going to be in the 90s for the next few here, as number four is from 1996, Memphis beating Tennessee. Tennessee this year would have Peyton Manning at QB, and we're already coming into this game ranked number six at six and one. Memphis, meanwhile, were coming into this game off of four losses in a row and were 26-point underdogs. Also, Tennessee ruled in this series as they were 15-0 versus Memphis coming into this game. But the strangest thing about this upset was that it was all Memphis' defense and special teams that kept them in it and won this game. As Tennessee would outgain Memphis 2-1 the defense would harass Manning all game and picked him off as well as had a few sacks. The special team supplied a touchdown in this game with an amazing 94-yard kickoff return by Kevin Cobb, which also won an ESPN award for best play that year. The end of the game was fairly spectacular as Tennessee kicked a field goal to take a 17-14 lead late. But Memphis would drive through their defense to complete a long pass and get a big run to set up a short touchdown run for the shocking 21-17 upset win. Memphis's shocking final drive is a main reason why this upset makes it into my top five, because like I mentioned, their offense really didn't do anything in this game until that final drive. But finally, this upset is in my top five because Tennessee would win out the rest of their season, finishing 10 and two, being in the top 10, while Memphis didn't win. They didn't win again until 1997. So it's not like this shocking upset win propelled them to a winning season in 1996. Oh man, number three is a doozy. It's from 1998. Virginia Tech fans will know this well. Temple beats Virginia Tech. This upset always makes the list of biggest upsets, but I'm putting this on my weird list because it really doesn't make any sense when you break it down. Temple were their usual Temple terrible selves as they were named one of the worst programs in the 1980s and in the 1990s they really weren't doing anything good either. As in 1998, Temple started the year 0-6, including a loss to one AA opponent William & Mary. Virginia Tech meanwhile were the polar opposites as they were 5-0 coming into this game and were gunning for the Big East title and potentially a national title. Also, Temple hadn't beaten Virginia Tech before, and Temple had yearly finished last or in the bottom half of the Big East Conference since it started less than a decade ago. 
Watching this game back again, you can see why this game is on this list of strangest upsets and why it's in the top 10 of pretty much every upset list. Because Virginia Tech would start strong and have a 17 to nothing lead. But from halftime on, it was all Temple as they outscored Virginia Tech 28 to seven to win the game 28 to 24. Many weird things would happen in this game too, like drop passes by Virginia Tech and horrible interceptions where they just overthrew guys or some were tipped. Plus, Temple were hitting big plays, which never happened, because like I mentioned, Temple were one of the worst programs over the last two decades. Also, Temple was giving up 40 points per game in the season, but they did the opposite of that throughout the second half of this game to pull off the upset. Finally, what makes this upset even weirder was that Temple would end the year 2-9. and nine. And next year, while Virginia Tech had Michael Vick, they went to the national title game. So yeah, this was a one in a million upset and deserves to be on every upset list, but I'm putting it on strangest because it just makes zero sense. And speaking of upsets that make absolutely no sense, this upset, like, this upset should always be on upset lists because it seriously makes no sense, and if you watch any of the highlights back, it will make even less sense as to why in 1985, UTEP beat BYU. When I tell you just how bad UTEP was at this point, it might be surprising since UTEP is a pretty competent team right now in college football, but at this point they hadn't had a winning season in over a decade, and they only won 15 games over the last 10 years, which is horrible. <laughs> It might not seem real, but it was. This team finished often at 1-10 or 0-11. Oh Their opponent was the opposite of that in BYU, who were coming off of nine straight conference title and had also won the national title the previous year. Along with that, UTEP was coming into this game 0-6, while BYU was 6-1. So with all of that said, you can see how monumental this upset would be as UTEP hung around all game with BYU and held off a late drive by BYU to win 23-16. This upset might sound like Georgia Tech over Bama, but this upset is so strange because it didn't lead to a windfall for UTEP as they lost the rest of their games to be 1-11 again. They would fire their coach at the end of the year too, so the upset didn't do much to help him either. BYU would end up winning the WAC title again, beating a top 10 Air Force team, which destroyed UTEP to start the season by 40, making this upset even stranger when you look at it again. And coming in at number one, I love this upset, and I love how strange it is, from 1999, Cincinnati beating Wisconsin. Cincinnati was not nearly as good as they are now, as they came off a 1998 season with just two wins. And that was after losing their first nine games. Their opponent, meanwhile, was Wisconsin, who had Ron Dane, who was looking to become the leading rusher in college football. Not many were giving Cincinnati a shot in this game, even though Cincinnati were playing at home in a new stadium. But instead, Cincinnati was up for the test as they put the pressure on Wisconsin all game. And even though Ron Dane was a little banged up, he still managed to run for 100 yards and a score. Cincinnati on offense used a lot of play packages as well as having a good run game, which got them their first touchdown. At half, Cincinnati actually had a lead at 7-6, and then they had a 14-12 lead through most of the second half. Even though Cincinnati were leading throughout pretty much the entire game, many were just waiting for Wisconsin to finally get a touchdown and take the lead but they made mistakes, like an interception while in Cincinnati territory, which erased a long run by Ron Dane earlier in the drive due to a holding penalty. But the capper was a late run by Ron Dane, where he was a yard away from scoring and giving Wisconsin the lead, only to fumble and give the ball back to Cincinnati. All of the things went right for Cincinnati on the day, and they would kick a field goal late in the game to win 17-12. The upset was so insane since Cincinnati was not very good at this point, and Wisconsin would lose the next week, but then win out to win the Big Ten that year and go to the Rose Bowl and win it. Cincinnati, meanwhile, would do the complete opposite and go 3-8, and eight, making this upset strange, and that is why I have to put it at number one, and I'm sure it's an upset that many Wisconsin fans still wonder about to this day. But thank you so much for watching and hanging out with me as I go through the top 10 strangest upsets in college football from 1945 through 2000. Make sure you give it a like below. Also, make sure you share it with another college football fan. And of course, subscribe to the channel below. Check out my social media. Help out the channel on my Patreon. And check out my podcast. All of that is in the description below. Have a fantastic rest of your day. And I'll have more college football content coming the rest of the season.